quick, please, somebody tell Joe Biden that his poll numbers are supposed to go up after a convention, not to, not down. Hi, my name is Kyle and welcome to the channel. This is The Conservative Take, where we take culture, TV, movies, and politics and filter to you the right way. If you like what we do here, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button and that bell icon so you don't miss any future content. Also, if you want to support us, please go to walktheway.net and make it known when you first walked away. Now, I'm going to talk to you about the poll numbers for the president and how in one day they went up four points. I had mentioned before, not on this channel recently, but I had mentioned in social media that I expected, well, maybe I did mention it in the video. I think I did that he would go up in some like, two or three points, but I was referring it mostly to what happened with his brother, Robert, and the reaction that the left had about just being mean and nasty that he would probably get a couple points because people were feeling you know, that it's sympathetic, right? So they're going to give him a sympathy vote because they just feel bad and they, they don't like how people are treating him for this particular case. So I don't know if that's some of it and maybe part of it, but, uh, or it could just be that the DNC convention just totally is horrible. And so here we have here a Rasmussen poll from Thursday, actually from Wednesday, I believe, where basically he went from 47% to 51%, a four point jump in one day. So here it says, Trump approval surges during DNC. It says Kamala Harris made history last night as the first black woman to accept a VP nomination for either main political party. She also helped make history for President Trump's poll numbers, which saw a surge thereafter. Though, to be fair, there was no shortage of speakers who could have unintentionally boosted Trump. So basically, they're saying that, yeah, Kamala was there but it may have just been the other people that were just as bad as she was, if not worse. So it says here in the Rasmussen poll, President Trump's approval stood at 47% yesterday, but made an incredible four percentage point leap this morning to 51%. When I reached out to Rasmussen to confirm that, this is Dan Bongino writing this article. When I reached out to Rasmussen to confirm that the sampling for today's poll wasn't taken before the DNC, begin to air, they said the polling data was being accumulated as the DNC speeches were ongoing. In other words, it is likely that some people were being directly influenced by the DNC, albeit not in favor of any Democrats. Obama also spoke last night and blasted Trump for not taking the presidency seriously, but Obama's approval was two percentage points lower than Trump's was at this exact same point in their respective presidencies. So let's take a look at this Rasmussen thing here. We see here on the 20th that Trump was actually actually up two points based on what Obama was this time in his presidency. So yeah, so that that is a true thing. So Trump is doing better than Obama was this point in history. I know it's different now than it was then. I mean, for many, 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 many reasons, particularly the, the lockdowns and the online virtual nature of the conventions, but still, that's something to, to, to think about. Go on to this article, it says, for the most part, there's been a consensus that this cycle's DNC has been a complete snooze fest. The speeches ain't great, and the ad splice in between feel eerily similar to drug commercials, except the Democrats don't mention the side effects of their policies. Well said, Dan. Biden is a candidate that has attracted little enthusiasm Let's take a look at this. Now, the enthusiasm for, for Biden, this is from April. These are older numbers, but still, I mean, they haven't done much more if you consider that then he was up six. And that's about where we are now, depending on who you look at. So Democrats appear to be throwing in the towel while Biden leads President Trump in a head-to-head -head matchup, 48 to 42, when voters overall were asked who they really think will win in November to Trump blowout 57 to 43. Now, this hasn't moved very, very much. The enthusiasm numbers for Trump are huge. Emerson found that Trump has a sizable 19 point advantage in the enthusiasm gap, 64 to 45. Some 30, some 36 percent of his supporters say they are extremely excited to vote for Trump. 20 percent said they they are very excited for Biden. Those numbers are 22 and 33 respectfully. Biden wins the mildly excited category, 29 to Trump's 22, but he also wins the not that excited category, 26 to 15. So there you go. All right. And so also in this article here, it says here that has shown up in this is showing up in the DNC ratings, which, by the way, were horrible. 
they were at 40% lower than they were this time four years ago. Uh, the Federalist has this that the viewership on TV networks tumbles 48% from 2016. Democrat National Convention night two viewership was down at least 40% from broadcasts of the same night in 2016. Even though many Americans are subject to government restrictions, keeping them cooped up at home far more this year. According to reports, the top six broadcast networks, MSNBC, CBS, NBC, ABC, Fox, and CNN only received 6.13 million viewers combined during airtime of the convention this year. It says here that, uh, it says here that marks a 40% drop from DNC night two broadcast network numbers in 2016, which did not occur during a pandemic. So to put this into perspective, America's Got Talent received more views during its scheduled hour on NBC than any other network individually recorded during the second night of the DNC. Tuesday night, which featured former U.S. Attorney General Sally Yates, Senate Democratic leader Charles Schumer, former Secretary of State John Kerry, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, former President Bill Clinton, former President Jimmy Carter and others were supposed to showcase the leaders and experts who seek to unite, not to divide. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. So look, let me just take a sidebar here. Take a sidebar. Have you ever noticed that the DNC has, a, has absolutely no bench to speak of? No bench. They have no, I mean, if you're looking at AOC as your bench and you're going to throw in there John Kerry, who is not He's, he's on his way out in terms of, I mean, he's a, he's a has been. Charles Schumer is a has been. I mean, yes, he's elected official, but this is not the future of your party. Bill Clinton is not the future of your party. If AOC is the future of your party, you've got problems. The viewership gained by the six main networks the first night of the, of the 2020 DNC was also down 6 million viewers from the first night of the DNC in 2016, which topped out at 25 million broadcast viewers. Night one did, however, pull significantly higher numbers of people, 19 million than those who tuned in Tuesday for night two. And so these are just numbers. We can, I'll, I'll leave a link here. I'm not going to go through all this. This is a lot of stuff to talk about and no one cares about, quite frankly, obviously. And so that's it. So for the fourth and final night, the ratings will likely be down 100% in my household. Very clever. Okay. This article was written by, I'm sorry, this was Matt Palumbo of Bungino. Uh, dot com. This is not Dan Bongino, but it was one of his writers. Anyway, so so what do you think? So President Trump is actually doing very well. Bounce four points. I'm curious to see what the night's numbers were like tonight because Joe Biden did his speech. I did not watch it, so I will come back maybe tomorrow, the next day, and let you know what happened there if I care to do so. If you care to even hear it. Anyway. That's it. So check it out. So if you like what I do here at the channel where I take culture, TV, movie and politics and filter to you the right way, then please hit like, subscribe and the bell icon so you don't miss any future content. And also go to walktheway.net and make it known when you first walked away. And also please share with your friends as we're trying to reach 10,000 subscribers. And by all means, have a great day and have a great night. And I hope that this didn't bore you by me talking about the boredom of the DNC convention. And also please check out some content that I have right here.